Tired of replacing car parts with boring aftermarket upgrades? Well, what if you could make completely custom designs that were 3D printed instead? And that's exactly what our E30 build needs. But first things first, let's grab the measurements to replace the shifter. For measuring, you could get away with a ruler or a tape measure, but there's actually something much better. And that's a caliper measuring tool. It has jaws that can be used to measure parts like the diameter of the shifter lever. Just squeeze the jaws around the part and now you have your measurement. You can also use the bottom of the caliper to measure height. Just make sure you zero out the caliper, which you can do by closing the jaw and selecting the zero button. And while measuring, I also like to draw the shape. This will help you give an idea of how to design the part, which I'll cover next. So the key for making your car parts easy to design is the CAD software you choose. And to jump over the hurdle of staring at a completely blank CAD screen, I'm going to share with you a free file and you'll be able to just download that from the description to just start modifying and creating the design that we're going to review now. Okay, so we're using Shaper 3D on an iPad with an Apple Pencil. We're going to start with just opening a new project. We have that file that you can download from the description. And what we can do is once you've downloaded it and installed Shaper 3D, you can do import, select, and it's going to be this blank shifter. So we can open this up and there you go. Now, if you want to learn how to make that base model, I have an entire workshop available in the description as well that will show you step by step on how to design that particular shifter. But for now, you can use the free model just to get your feet wet on how to do some basic designs. And so what we'll do is we'll select the top of this and then we'll go into sketch mode. And then that takes you into the top view. You can still move around, readjust, pinch zoom. You can also use this little triangle here at the top and you can double, you can double click That'll take you out, or you can just go back to the top view where you were. You can select and go back into sketch mode. We're gonna zoom in just a little bit, and we're gonna go ahead and create or draw a little shape that we can notch out of the side. And so what we'll do is we'll zoom in a little bit here, and we can create a little rectangle tool, or sorry, a little rectangle shape just like that. Now, if for some reason these lines don't end up being the same, you can select those two and then there's these constraints on the right hand side. You could select more and make those equal. And then you can exit your sketch and you can select to extrude. And as you can see, I have the little arrows that I can pull down. But we have a little bit of a problem here, which is we created our shape a little too far inward. And so we have this other piece that's left over. So what you can do is you can use the go back. So you can select go back here, remove those. You can go into the history and make those lines a bit longer. But we'll just go in the top view and we'll just go back into. let's do this again. Select the top and then go into sketch. And then we have our line tool and we'll just use our grid here. Oops, uh, we'll snap there, snap there, there, and there. And let's see, 7.65, yep. So again, if you didn't get those right, you can come here, make those equal. And now when we exit our sketch, we can select. Now, if you ended up drawing that shape on the bottom, it's okay, you can just flip yourself right on over and extrude or pull those arrows out to make that shape. But before we go ahead and punch this out, I mean, we could do this, but we actually want to make that shape rotate along the outside of the shifter. And so what we're going to do is we're going to keep our selection there and we're going to go under our left hand screen. We can go more and there's this cool tool called revolve, which is basically like a snake that's going around this dotted pole. And so if we click that, basically we are going to revolve our shape around this pole or this center, and then we can pull it down and take a look at that. So just by creating your shape using the revolve tool, you can just pull it down and 80 millimeters is the height of our shifter and you can click done. And there you actually have that first shape that we're gonna use to etch into the side of our shifter. 
Now you can redo that, but that would be very painstake, a very painstaking process to redraw all of those and then redo that dozens of times. And so again, Shaper 3D makes this really easy where we can come and we can go back into our items tray. We can actually select that body. Here you can see that was the sketch that we did. Here's the body that we did. And if we close that, we can now select a different tool and we can select on the left hand side here, it's this pattern tool. And if we select that, we can create a pattern design around the center and our center point is here. And we can recreate that pattern. And maybe we'll go more than three. Let's maybe go for 20. And look at that, you just created those 20. And we can select done. Once we have all of those patterns recreated, there's another tool that we can use on the left hand side. We can look at our items and we can select our body. And then we can go to our tools and we can say subtract and we're going to subtract all of the circular patterns from our body. And as you can see, check that out. So it's literally subtracting those circular patterns that we created around our entire body. And now we have a really cool design that we've created on the outside of our shifter. But I don't think that looks that great. I think we can do a little bit better. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit more to the shifter. Now, the reason we're designing our shape with the hole on the top, which is essentially this is your shifter, right? That's how it should be, is because I like to create things the way that they're going to be 3D printed. So I design it appropriately. So if we were to design our part with that hole on the bottom and send this off to our printer or print on demand service, what would happen is our printer would have to print extra material inside this hole all the way up in order to support what we call this overhang here. It's kind of like icing on a cake. If you're piping icing on your cake and you go on the outside of the cake, there's nothing to hold the icing and the icing would literally fall. And, and that's what would happen with the 3D printer as it was printing each of these layer lines. When it got to the top of that empty section, the, the filament would literally just fall in the hole without some supports holding it. So I like to design things where I'm like, okay, I'm going to 3D print this starting from the bottom and work my way up. And what would happen if we turn this section view, we can look at the inside. What would happen as this gets 3D printed is when it gets here, it'll stop, it'll continue to print up and there's no overhangs here. It's just printing upward and then it prints around and goes all the way to the very top. There is this nice, nice little notch at the top, but what's cool about 3D printers is if, it, if it's a gradual steep, no more than 45 degrees, it should have no problem printing that overhang there without the support. All right, so if we turn that section view off, that's why we kind of designed that way. And what I want to do is I actually want to make the top of the shifter uh, a little bit uh, thicker. And the way we could do that is we can come here, select, and if we pull that out, we can make that a little bit taller, but that, that's not necessarily what I want to do. What I want to do is I actually want to make this larger at the top of the shifter. So imagine this is the top of the shifter without taking that pattern. And so what we could do is we can select and we can draw a new shape and I'm just going to draw a circle. And now if I exit that, I have this new circle that I can select. If you can see, now that circle, it still carries the shape. So I don't want that to happen. So what I want to do, if I open up my items and I select that sketch, I can go into more and let's see, I can move, I can move that shape. Let's see about six millimeters upwards. And then if I exit, I can now select that shape and I can extrude and there you go. So now that's attached to the shifter and it doesn't carry the design through, but uh, that looks okay. But I think we can make it even look a little bit better. So if we close the items and we select, we can do a fillet or a chamfer, depending on what you want to do is you can pull this out and you can go something a little bit like that. Now, remember the 3d printer, you want that to be no more than 45. So if we do, if we do a circle that might have a hard time printing without a supports and taking the supports off this layer will, will, won't look that great. So what we might want to do instead 
is go with the sharp. And you can type in the, what you want. You can, you know, go that. It's a little bit too, too high. I think maybe three is pretty good. Three millimeters. That looks pretty good. Okay, so that's the bottom and it'll print up. You could do the same on the, the other side too if you wanted to put another circular pattern there. Or I'm sorry, if you wanted to put another circle and then not carry the pattern through. But um, I think that actually looks pretty good. Okay, so now what we could do is now that we're ready, we can say export and we can select export. Now here's the big difference between the free version and the paid version of Shaper 3D. So you can export it to an STL, which is something a 3D printer would rec uh, recognize or uh, a print on band service would recognize. And the big thing is the free version has low resolution and the paid version unlocks high resolution. So I actually want to export in both low and high, and then I'm gonna show you what that looks like, the differences between these here when we take it over to our 3D printer. All right, so now we're going to take our files that we created in Shaper 3D and import them into Bamboo Studio. So here's the low res. And I'm also going to drag the high res in at the same time so we can see the differences between the two versions. So the low res version you can see looks a little bit pixelated and the design actually looks pretty interesting. So maybe we'll give it a print and see how it looks. If you want to change the 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 strength you can add more walls to your part so this will take a little bit more time but let me show you what that does this will give the multiple so you can see that there's multiple walls and as you add more walls you're basically adding more layer adhesion which is giving your part more strength so here you can see there's multiple walls if we back that back to two and we slice again we can see that there's only two walls there so we can stay with the two walls the other thing i typically like to do is i like to change the sparse infill pattern to geoid as well and 15 percent is usually pretty good the larger size you go you can play around and mess with that but that's the infill so you can see that infill it's creating a, a lot of strength as it's kind of going in these these different patterns here and I like to go with that. And the time frame doesn't add too much time. Sometimes you can play around with adjusting that and changing the time to be even less. And then one last thing you can do is you can actually enable, let's see what's called a brim. So you can add a brim to the bottom of the part and what that'll do is add just a little bit of extra material to really help hold that first layer down especially if you're printing in ASA so here we go you can see that extra layer that's around that will help hold that first layer down if you run into any of those problems all right so now we can go ahead and select our ASA I have it on the external um, spool in the in the filament dryer and we can go ahead and hit send once that printer warms up we'll be using heat and uv resistant asa filament now asa can also absorb moisture so we're also using a filament dryer it takes around four to six hours but it will help make your car parts print perfect I'm pretty happy with the result. And here's with the low resolution. It actually doesn't really look that bad. It actually looks pretty cool. And I think I like this one. But let me show you how the high res came out. Look at the design. It is awesome. It came out perfect. And if you compare the two side by side, The biggest gripe I probably have with this one is you can see where the low res, it kind of doesn't look all that great as our pattern goes into the shape here. And again, that's mostly because we're using the free version, 
but it doesn't look that bad. I actually like both of them. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. And now let's do a test fit. Now let's test fit this one. All in all, not too bad. Our measurements came out okay. Now, if you mess up your measurements, you can go back with the history tool and change your diameters. And if you just so happen to have a shifter knob that actually has a screw on type, we can use that same pattern that we did on the outside of this on the inside to make a screw. And so you would then be able to screw it down depending on the type of screw or thread pattern that you had. Now, I know what you're probably now wondering is how strong is this particular shifter? Well, we have a whole nother video that you can watch that goes over 3D printing strengths and you can check that video out here.